One film stock that might not be so often mentioned or even recognized would be Ilford XP2 Super 400, which I have right here. What makes this stock fairly unique and maybe not so widely recognized is that it is a black and white film stock that can be developed in C41 color negative developer. Same process, same everything. With most black and white films, you're talking different times for different stocks. And even some stocks, if they're a little older or older editions, then you're gonna have different times in the newer version of the stock. For example, older Tri-X from like the 70s versus Tri-X from 2023. You have just like different temperatures you have to worry about and times and chemical. There's a lot that goes into developing black and white film. On the surface, it would seem simple to develop black and white film. But in my mind, it's almost more complicated than color negative C41. So this film can be developed in C41 stock, and you can even develop it in the same tank as color negative film. Now, as I said, this is Ilford XP2 Super 400, so it's 400 ISO film. But in reality, Ilford says you can shoot it from ISO 50 all the way to ISO 800 on the same roll and develop it all together as one. Around ISO 200, they say that it would be the finest grain while at ISO 800, you might deal with a little bit of the muddy shadows, a little bit of the higher grain. Nonetheless, I thought it was quite interesting just to have such flexibility. With all that being said about Ilford's wide exposure latitude, I figured I'd take it out and shoot some landscapes with it with my 6x12 setup. If you might have seen my previous video, then you kind of know what to expect as I already shot the same stock in the previous video. But anyhow, I figured I'd focus more on the film in this video and just show you how well it can handle varying lighting conditions, harsh lighting conditions in many cases, during the middle of the day, and how it would handle long exposures in the middle of the day. The day table mounts started off dark and raining. Streams were ripping because of the rain, so I was a little lucky that if it did clear up, I would have some great possibilities for taking waterfall photos. Fortunately, by the time I got to my first waterfall, the rain did finally stop and things cleared up a little bit. In this shot, we have a wonderful scene with a tree on the right there on that little rock outcropping. It makes for a nice composition possibility. For those who don't know, this is Phantom Falls, probably the most popular photo spot in my whole area. It's uh, not too bad of a hike to get here, but I figured shooting in 6x12 would be a little different than what you normally see. I also shot a little 4x5 because the camera's already set up, might as well, you know, not much extra work. My next shot is of this fluffy lichen and moss basalt uh, rock face here. It's a really nice intimate landscape possibility. I don't shoot many intimate landscapes, so this is good practice for me.
Don't be like this guy with a selfie stick. This slot in the rock formation here produces interesting composition as it perfectly frames in the waterfall in front of me and also kind of distorts the scale of the foreground and the waterfall creates an interesting composition possibility. For my last shot, I went for the classic head-on long exposure of Ravine Falls. The low-hanging branch kind of messes with the framing a bit, but it's nonetheless you know, the best angle that I could really get from down low. Leaving Table Mountain that day, I spotted a dozen or more compositions worth making in the spring when the annual super bloom takes place. It's gonna be a lot more green by then. It's gonna be sunny, of course. And I think with the open view of the Western horizon, I'm gonna have some really nice golden hour opportunities. So I hope you guys liked the video. I know it was not the most exciting with like, what, six images and all. But with that being said, it's a slow process with the six by 12 back. And really, it's just nice to kind of slow down to that speed and try and be as careful and s deliberate as possible when taking photographs. I think some of the compositions could have been a little better, maybe the lighting better. Some of the images were a little too cluttered in my mind, but nonetheless, it was a fun process to take these images to develop in, in C41. And I hope maybe some of you guys have a better idea of what to expect when you're shooting with this film stock in the future. Mm -hmm.